Yo, welcome back guys. Right, this is my video on how I made my own tool bag, which is by far the coolest thing I've ever done in this entire world other than being a father, obviously. I have to say that. So, how it all started, Velocity, Velocity Pro Gear, uh, manufactures tool bags, they have done for many, many years, always been top quality stuff. And when I started got into the YouTube sphere, should we say, I noticed them, noticed a few people were using them we start using one or two bags uh, amongst other companies and see what we liked, what worked. And we have a game changer. So Pete, PB Plumber, I'll put him on the screen, the legend that is Pete. Pete teamed up with Velocity. Being a plumber, he wanted to make his own plumber's tool bags, uh, manufactured and designed for individual jobs, which I've always been a big fan of. You know, I want to have a fuse board bag, I want an ICR bag, I want a first fix, a second fix, a testing bag specific bags for specific jobs to make our life a little bit easier. If we've got the room, we've got the space, we've got the money to fill each bag up, we can pull and take out the van or the unit or wherever our garage is of the bags we need for that day, make the load in the van a bit lighter, make our life a bit more organized, if possible. Pete did that with designing uh, the 7.5, the 6.5, a service bag, um, a jobbing bag, and he had his own spin and take on each bag, which I really, really liked and admired at the same time. So I reached out to Velocity and said, do you have any electricians in mind to do electrical related bags? You've done Pete, you've done the plumbers, let's do the superior trade, let's do sparking, let's get the creme de la creme of tool bags made. And they said, no. I said, well, I've got a little channel, I've got a bit of an import, I've got a big sphere of people I can speak to and get a pinch of my ideas and see what we can create. They said, yep, good idea. Go away, go make some designs and come back to us in a couple of weeks. That, that seems like a simple idea. But I challenge anyone out there to get a pen and paper and to try and create a tool bag that already hasn't been created. Honestly, I went through paper and paper and paper and paper to the point where I was like, I need to figure out what type of bag I want and why I want to make it. So I've always been a big fan of putting all my screwdrivers and everything I need physically in my pockets, my trousers, carrying it in every job, full to the brim, taking my trousers off when I get home and then feeling the weight of the world really falling off because I used to carry that much stuff. I said, I want, I want to make a little bag. I want to make a service bag. I want to make a second fix bag. I want something that everything in my pocket can go in my bag and this gets carried to me every single job. That was where the idea of I want to create a second fix bag because I want it to be small, I want it to be compact, I want our key tools that we need in there and a few other little bits and bobs that we can at the same time. So I started out and got the idea and inspiration from the Rogue 2 which I put on the screen. So the Rogue 2 was a service bag that we adapted and tried to put our electrical tester in it and use it as a testing bag. It wasn't designed for it so I spoke to Tony who owns Velocity and said cut it apart, figure out what you want, get some sizes and everything. So I cut that apart, figured out what I wanted. I wanted a few things from my screwdrivers, but not too many pockets, but enough pockets that not everyone had to be used, but you can double over and made the stretchy neoprene. So this is, was my drawing, which I'll put on screen now. The drawing is one that I made. And really, I'm pretty happy that the drawing that I made with a pen and some dimensions is almost exactly what we've got. We've got the fold down lid, we've got the screwdriver compartments, we've got the pocket on the side for continuity tester, we've got a tape hook, um, no pockets on the front. I wanted to carry on the uh, uh, bungee cords from across from the testing bag because I like the design. We also have a little sleeve in the front so we can actually put rolls of sleeving in here if we wanted to or other things, maybe drawings, bits of paper, work stuff, slide it in the front and hold it in place. So once the drawings were done, sent over to Tony. We had a few phone calls, Skype calls. I went and saw him a few times to figure out exactly sizes and what it's for and the purpose of the height, the width, the size, the weight. There's so many things involved where you think, oh, I'll draw this, off you go, go make it. It's not that simple. But Tony did a great job at sort of doing a proper drawing off my drawing. If I've got it, I'll put it on the screen now if I can find it. This was nearly a year ago. So this process is very long. And then a couple of months later, got a picture sent to me, which was this bag. So this is the first prototype. So every single one is slightly ever so different. Uh, this bag came through, really happy, straight off the bat, the design, the look, what I drew. We were given to use it for four weeks. So I've used it for four to five weeks of physically using it on site every day, putting the load out that I wanted in it, figuring out how the bag worked and ticked. Figured out the handle's too long, 
The pocket on the side isn't big enough. There's a few pockets that I wanted to change and make bigger ones inside. But all in all, the design, the feature, the size was there. It needed tweaking. A couple more weeks later, the uh, second prototype turned up. So with the second prototype, once again, the pocket was bigger, happy. The handle was shortened. Unfortunately, it was too short. You couldn't quite get into the bag. Opening it up, the pockets were right. Uh, there was a few more pockets. I designed two more on the inside because if we're going to use a second fixed bag, we use the Bosch Go. We use a lot of uni lights and lights. Um, I wanted stuff where I can go, this goes there, this goes there. It worked perfectly. And then at the top here, we don't have, oh, the logo peels off. Uh, we don't have a zippable pocket. And Tony said, are you sure you don't want a pocket? There's room for a pocket, do you want a pocket? And I was very hesitant, so I said, no, we don't need one. I want to stick to this. I don't want any stuff on the front. And then process of elimination from going through different bags and different bags, because originally, you can see here on the first one, the D-ring was on the side. And I was like, I don't like that because the continuity test is in the way and I want to have the tape clip on it. So the tape clip was put on it. The D-rings were then moved to the side and to the back and made smaller, because these ones were way too big. And it was just literally a process of elimination, figuring out how we liked it, what was good, what was bad, what we would change. And the best way to test it was physically on site. I sent a few pictures into my members on my YouTube and got a few hints and ideas and tips and tricks what they would like to see. Nothing drastic, but enough that we could say this is a really good usable bag that I'm enjoying using. Then this one came through. This was second to last. Everything on it was almost perfect to be honest there wasn't a great deal i'd changed i think the only internal stuff was a one pocket was changed on there uh, the base was hard we got a little pocket on the side the base was hard uh, the handle was the right length it wasn't too short wasn't too long it was just in the middle and then finally the final product turned up which is here so i'll pull these two out three out of the way so when the final design came through the name of the bag is the mb100 100 it's called 100 nbs after myself nick bundy and everything just worked well. I was happy, I liked the design, working on site, filled it up, it's not too heavy. Really, it's not too heavy at all. Obviously, the more stuff you put in, the heavier it's gonna get. But overall, it was great. We hadn't figured out pricing yet. Um, we hadn't figured out how we're gonna market this because we don't wanna just target electricians. We wanna target as many tradespeople as possible. You can utilize this bag for what you did like I did with the other bags. It's not designed specifically for an electrician second fix bag. We've got obviously a couple of these. Adam's gonna be getting one soon. He's gonna set up in his way. And I'm not gonna let him look at mine. I'm gonna see how he sets it up because everyone will do this different. This is the beauty of having your own tool bag with pockets in different places that you can utilize it for the way that you want. Then I had a brainwave halfway through. And this, I saw a niche in the market and I was like, well, this is what I want because sleeving is the biggest thing in the world for me that i hate carrying around especially second fixing for domestic sparks blue and brown sleeving you can cut off a meter you can literally use six inches that's all you'd use the rest of it would go in the bin because if it comes on a spool i thought huh i said to tony i bought some stuff on amazon put some stuff together i thought this here is what i want to see like, i think this is a good design i used it for a bit he really liked it it's like if this can be incorporated within the range that we could do fantastic and we ran with it for a bit. I used it for three or four weeks. And what kept happening is I kept knocking the spools. I bought them off Amazon. I made the thing myself and it kept unraveling. Send it to Tony. What can you do with this? Well, how can you make it work? And if you went to the, uh, not the Elex, if you went to the installer show recently, the first prototype of this. So what he's done is designed this much better with a case around that allows you to have two to four mil sleeve in of all different colors of your choice, clipped on the bag on a carabiner, which you can also clip onto your belt as well. So if you're doing a lot of second fixing, you can pull off what you need, snip it, you're doing a fuse board, that sort of thing. So this will be coming out at some point as well. Don't know costings, but it's coming out. And I really, really think for domestic sparks, it will be an absolute game changer when you're doing boards and second fixing. It's obviously not gonna to be too expensive either, so which is a bonus. Going back to the bag. So this bag is retained at 103 pound on Velocity website for pre-order. It should be hitting the UK around about the middle of August. So I'll show you around the bag. Continuity tester on the side, we've got a little pocket on the side. Obviously we've got the um, spirit level adapt adapter for second fixing. Opening the bag up, the loadout I have is interchangeable screwdriver set in the pocket. And we have a piece of fabric here to protect the material on the front from the sharp edges. I have an arm slice, a very rusty uh, wearer. Hex bit, hex bit, yeah, hex bit set. 
Uh, in here, this pocket I perfectly designed here on the right hand side for the Bosch Go. This is especially designed for second fixing. So, which you guys see me use loads and loads of times. That stays in there. And what I do is I can stick the bit in here. You know what I was saying earlier about the pocket at the back? Tony insisted that we have it. And I was like, okay, we'll go with it. And then I found the tool check plus that we all use day in, day out for second fixing with electricians and commercial sparks as well. The clip at the back sits perfectly, absolutely perfectly in the back. So you can literally slot your tool check plus in and out in the back. Oh, you've still got the pocket remains. I've just used it where I can literally slot that in. You pull the lever up, screwdriver bits come available, you snap them back into place. And I've just filled it up. We've got a couple of Nipex grips. We've got the Ergo strip. We've got a small pair of snips. I've got my Unilite ILR925, is it? IL925R on the left-hand side, magnetic base. We've got some long nose pliers. We've got seven in ones. We've got normal pliers, uh, the Nipex cable stripper, the twin stripper. Oh, I've got two Ergo strips in there. Oh, nice. And then the small snips. This is the kit what I would take in for servicing, fuse boards, EICRs. Everything in here is what I need to complete a second fix job or an EICR. So that was the thought process behind it. I'm so happy with how it turned out. There's more bags to come. I will do another bag, a video at some point on the label make maker bag. Uh, I'll put a few pictures up now. It's a label maker for the Brother e E550W uh, with the cartridges. I designed it so you can put the charger in the bomb, the Brother printer on top, and on the side you can have about, I think it's about seven or eight uh, cartridges for the printer as well. It comes with a carabiner, clip it on your tested bag, and away you go. Cool little protective pouch for it without having the big metal hard case metal plastic so as far as that stands i am currently in the development of trying to make a small testing bag we already have the testing bag which you i own adam owns loads of you guys bought and we all adore and love but i want to make a simplified smaller version that we can put in van vaults keep out the way that we can then link up together with our label bag everything hooked together and we'll be sweet and happy and nice and light I, i'm making this bag for the bare essentials because the other bag is amazing but there's room in there that i don't need it's extra space i want to condense it down Make it, for specific, make it for specific items. Uh, then on top of that as well, I'm gonna make a big version of this and also a first fix bag as well for all our bolster chisels, blades, multi-tool blades, where we can go into a rewire and we have our entire kit in there that we can use other than power tools. So if you enjoyed the video guys, hit like, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll put the link below to this bag. Uh, go and check it out, even just for interest, have a look around, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care now, bye bye then.